Y'all have been asking to do a more detailed video about curves, so here it is. <laughs> What up simpletons? So this has been a highly requested video. The good thing about learning curves is once you know it within Snapseed, you'll be able to apply it to curves within Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, and Lightroom. So here we go. So this is a photo that I'll be using. No edits have been made to it yet. Let's go to tools curves. The first curve that you see is the RGB curve, which combines red, blue, and green all together into one. The best way to learn curves is to visualize a black and white gradient on the X and Y axis. Once you start with that, you can pretty much navigate your way around the curve. So there are five points on a curve that you should be aware of. So you have your whites, your highlights, your midtones, your shadows, and your blacks. And it doesn't really matter where you place a point. Snapseed offers up a grid, so you can follow the grid if you wanted to to make it easier. So now that we have our five points, let's do a deeper dive onto what each point means. Visualize our gradient again. If we bring the top point down, you'll see that you start losing your whites, whereas if I bring it up, then the whites become more contrasted. Obviously, we don't want either extreme, and I'm pretty happy with the way the whites are now, so I'm going to leave it as is. Let's move on to the second point, which is our highlight. Highlights are essentially the brightest parts of the photo. If we bring this point up, you'll see that I start looking like a burnt Oompa Loompa. And if I go down here, I start looking like I consume some nuclear waste and I'm looking like a hazard. So we want to avoid that. Here, I'm only going to adjust this a little bit. I kind of want to bring more detail back into my white outfit. So I'm going to bring it down slightly. There we go. Now, the third point on the curve is our midtones and generally used for editing your complexion. If I move this up a little bit, my face has more of a glow, whereas if I move it down, it gets a little bit more flat. So everybody wants a glow, so I'm gonna raise this a little bit up here. And then our fourth point on the curve is our shadows. It depends what feel you're going for. If you're going for a more faded film vintage look, then you can raise the shadows up, but if you like your picture more contrasted, then you can raise the shadows down. In my case, I like it more faded, so I'm going to raise it a little bit here. And then the very last point on the curve is blacks. If you raise the blacks, you'll get a more faded look, whereas if you raise it down, the blacks become more contrasted, similar to shadows. Because I love that faded look, we're gonna raise this a little bit, like so. And that's pretty much it, folks. So you can finish editing here, or you can play around with the specific red, green, and blue curves if you wanted a specific tint to your photo. I'm gonna show you that anyways. The same concept of the five different points on the curve applies to all the other curves, so the red, the green, the blue, and luminous. To make it easier to understand, you wanna envision the color wheel. Every color on the color wheel has an opposite color. You can simply tell by playing around the curves. So if I raise the reds, I'm adding a lot of red into the shot, whereas if I raise it down, I'm adding the opposite color, which is cyan. I generally just play with the highlights, midtones, and shadow points. That's just my personal preference. I want this picture to be warmer, so I'm gonna up the red highlights and I'm gonna up it a little bit on the midtones as well. I'm gonna keep the shadows pretty close on the line, like so. And then now we're gonna move on to the green curve. If we move the green curve up, obviously it's gonna add a lot of green, but we're not looking to play the Grinch today. If we do the opposite effect, it adds a lot of magenta. We're not gonna be that drastic today, so we're gonna add our different points. And now moving on to the blue curve. So again, the opposite for blue would be yellow. If you keep that in mind, you kind of know where you want to toggle your line. As you can tell, I'm only making subtle changes because that's all you really need. And then the last curve, which is luminous. Luminous is great for adjusting the overall brightness of a photo. If I feel like the photo is a little dark right now, I can always up the highlights and I can darken the midtones here. But if I raise it, I look a little bit more animated <laughs> and that's kind of my style so I'm gonna stick with that I'm gonna do the same here it kind of just makes my lipstick pop a little bit more and my skin tone if I do a before and after there's already a difference and we only made subtle changes to the curves maybe I'll just start editing <laughs> with just curves Wow so my two biggest tips to being successful with curves is one, a little goes a long way. You only need to make subtle changes for curves to work in your favor. And two, practice, practice, practice. 
I still go through a lot of trial and error when I go through curves. Sometimes what works for one photo won't work for another photo. Really see what works with you. You don't have to use all the curves, but don't be afraid to play around with it. Hopefully this helps explain curves a little bit better so that you're less hesitant next time. Don't forget to tag me in your photos. I would love to see what you guys are doing with Snapseed. I'm always learning. So if you love this video and you want more Snapseed tutorials, please let me know in the comments with other Snapseed ideas and what you want to learn more about. And if you haven't already, join the Simpleton family and subscribe. All right, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, bye. Hopefully this helps. Blah. Blah. <laughs>